first episode of My Dog's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing Aquaman in under a minute. The movie starts with a man in Maine going up to his dog and seeing a woman on the shore. He goes to help that woman and helps her recover. In the morning, when she is fully recovered, she explains that she is the queen of Atlantis. They fall in love and they have a baby. And that child was none other than Aquaman. Now, when the queen left, Guards were looking for her and she and they needed her to come back. So she had to leave Atlantis while Aquaman stayed home. He was taught many swimming skills by the Ocean Master. While the Queen of Atlantis was not at the surface and wasn't on shore, she actually had another child and needs to find a strong warrior's trident. Now the only person that could pick up the trident is a good leader and someone that that knows who can defeat the evil sea monster that is currently guard guarding it. If you want to know what happens left next, be sure to watch the movie and you'll be pretty shocked of what happens. See you. Okay. A Dog's Movie Minute. This is the second episode. Today we'll be reviewing Cars 3. In the beginning of the movie, as you may know, the main character, Lightning McQueen, gets beat. A new car called Jackson Storm gets past them with a with a fast as any cars movie. The race starts with Lightning McQueen racing around, but there is a new car in the race. That's right, a new car. This new car is more modern and has better technology and is overall a better, more higher standard car than Lightning McQueen. The car's name is Jackson Storm. Lightning McQueen also gets a new sponsor. I forgot what it was called though. A big fan of Lightning McQueen sponsors him and has a personal trainer help him become better than Jackson Storm. McQueen wants to compete in the Florida race with Jackson Storm. Can you like make my voice like deeper during that part. Like just make it deeper there. Will he win? Will he lose? Watch the movie to find out. Okay, I'm not yeah, we did this twenty times. That was terrible again. Yeah. Welcome to the third episode of Madaz. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the third episode of Madaz Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Lego Movie 2, the second part. Now, spoiler alert, real quick. The beginning is bad. The beginning starts off with everything being normal, and there's these new blocks that come in, and everybody's confused where they came from. They kind of just like popped out of nowhere. And basically, if you watch the Lego Movie, the first one, there would basically be like these flashbacks like um, seeing into the real world and what was actually going on. If you watch the first one, it's actually a person actually making the blocks and actually, you know, moving things around. And his sister actually making the new blocks and kind of be like, oh, play with us or whatever. Emmett, the main character, built a heart to show their love together. But all the sister really does, it basically breaks everything down and turns it into the Lego apocalypse. <laughs> Get it? Oh my god. And basically it's a Lego apocalypse, they're gone, everything's destroyed, but basically they come back again and there's, there's like a new Lego, kind of like a helmet, like a, she has a helmet on, or I can't say she, let's assume it. There's a new Lego, it has a helmet on and everything, no one knows who it is or what it is, everybody just runs away into their little vault room, it's really big, you know, it's like no one can get in, it's basically all made of Legos because that's what it is. The person breaks in and takes Wildstyle, Batman, and Unikitty, and all the other main characters. They take him to a distant place in the Lego movie. But in real life, it shows that the sister's actually just taking her to her room. Emmett builds a, a spaceship and goes over there to help save them. When he gets there, there's this weird heart, this weird heart thing that, say, that sings a whole song about how she's not evil. Now, she could be evil, or maybe she couldn't be. Emmett also meets another Lego along the way. Is that person secretly evil? Is that person not secretly evil? Watch the rest of the movie to find out. Welcome to the fourth episode.
episode of Madaz Wee Minute. Today's episode, we'll be reviewing Incredibles 2. The beginning of the movie starts off with uh, Incredibles, uh, if you watch the first movie, uh, you, you get a little preview of Incredibles 2 with the Underminer coming up see, saying he's going to undermine the bank, basically, or the whole city, basically just take everything from them, right? The Super is incredible, you know, the Incredibles. They all go, they're like, bam, bam, bam. They go get him. The Underminer escaped, and he still stole a lot of money, and the Supers, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Madaw's Movie Minute. Today's episode, we'll be reviewing Incredibles, wait, I already said that. The Incredibles, you know, they go, bam, bam, fight them. They unfortunately, uh, don't catch them, which, and the Underminer stole a lot of money from the bank. And the people are blaming them for causing more damage. Now uh, supers have been banned from the town. And they basically had to move away. But while fighting the Underminer, Frozone, uh, if you know him from uh, Incredibles 1, you know, Frozone uh, also helped in. And while running away, Frozone um, met a guy in the alley. And he was basically saying, like, come to my convention and you'll see uh then we can try to make supers you know legal again and the incredibles have to move somewhere else but they had to move someone else somewhere else so when they met the guy and they you know they actually became a team you know they got to move into a bigger house they got new schools but unfortunately only one superhero could go and that was uh last girl the uh, the wife of mr incredible uh, hello you're not recording no, we are. It was basically just like Elastic Girl supposed to go, so they went, you know. Uh, she went, at least. Yeah, she went. And Mr. Incredible had to stay at home, being super jealous that he couldn't go. And uh, something happens uh, with to the Incredibles. There's a new villain that basically takes over people's minds. And there was basically a lot of things that they had to do that to do uh, Miss Incredible. Miss Incredible, or whatever you want to call it, Last Girl, I do a bunch of different things, and if you want to know all the different things she did, be sure to watch the movie to find out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth episode of Madawa's Movie Minute. What was that noise? Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth episode of Madawa's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing Monster House. The beginning of the movie starts out with two kids playing catch outside their house. And their ball mistakenly gets across to the creepy house across, you know, like across the across their house, basically. The rumor around that neighborhood is that anything that goes on that yard is gone forever. And the kids are kind of suspicious about that because the next morning, they see that the ball was gone where it was. Well, the guy actually came out and took the ball, but yeah. But they're suspecting like something a little bit different about that house. You know, kind of a little, just a little bit Bit weird. They basically try to investigate it. They put another thing at the yard and they go back in the house with the telescope. They see that the house actually moves. That's around Halloween time, so trick or treaters are coming. Guess what? Trick or treaters are going up to that house and stuff, and it's like, no! So this old man basically had to scare them away, which who lived in the house, anyways. And uh, yeah, that's basically what happens. But one day there's this girl uh, who's selling Girl Scout cookies who goes up to that house, and these boys try to stop her, and the house with uh, trees and stuff basically moves, trying to grab them or eat them or, you know, just kill them or something like that. They're basically like, boo, 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 oh, I'm gonna eat you. They call the police, but the police don't believe them. Like, the house is already back to normal. And the police are like, kids, it's just a house, calm down. But when they leave, the police go up to the house and they're like, ooh, look at me, ooh, I'm so scary, scary house. And then the house is like, what'd you say about me? <laughs> and it basically, you know, takes some, I think he eats one of them, takes the police car, crushes it up, and yeah. You wanna know what happens left? left. If you not, if you want, if you wanna know what happens next, be sure to, if you wanna know what happens next, be sure to watch the movie to find out. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Madawa's Wii Minute. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Infinity War. The beginning of the movie starts off with Thanos, the purple character, getting an Infinity Stone, Power Stone. And basically now he wants to collect all the Infinity Stones so he can wipe out half the universe. He wants to just basically wipe, wipe out half the universe. And all the heroes from all the different Marvel movies 
movies, you know, Spider-Man, Black Panther, all those people, they're all trying to fight him and, you know, basically team up and get Thanos. But the thing is, the movie, they don't have one big battle, no. Thanos goes to various different locations to find each Infinity Stone and to fight uh, heroes there. Like in one scene, uh, Vision, the uh, hero, has an Infinity Stone on his forehead right there. Then basically he goes to Wakanda, to Wakanda to help remove the Infinity Stone and then destroy it so Thanos can't get it. So there's a big battle at Thanos with all these, you know, monsters and like Black Panther and just like at all of Wakanda. And there's some like in space, you know, there's some out of space. Even Guardians of the Galaxy are there. And they're all just trying to fight Thanos and like see who wins and see if he gets all the Infinity Stones. And if he gets all the Infinity Stones, they wipe out half the universe. To know what happens next, no, I can't end it like that. So yeah, the whole movie, they're basically just fighting everywhere. You know, they want to get, they want to make sure Thanos doesn't get any Infinity Stone and just make sure that he basically dies overall. Does Thanos get all the Infinity Store Stones? Make sure you watch the movie to find out. <laughs> they could have just, they could have just got Thanos' head and just, like, like, the movie produced so dumb these days, dude. I to another episode of mm, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Madal's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing Captain Marvel. The beginning of the movie starts off with a woman uh, basically waking up from her sleep and going off to ask this dude to basically start training. Uh, they start fighting and while they are fighting, she, uh, she keeps getting beaten up and she couldn't, you know, like for her training, like she couldn't fight back. So she used her powers, you know, like a bird. Like she used, she used her powers to basically destroy him. And the guy was like, "You need to control your powers." So she has struggle, you know, doing that. But every now and then, she'll see flashbacks of something else. She won't know what it means, but she, she'll have like these little things, like, like, oh, what is oh, that? What is that? that? Anyway, uh, they go off to fight, you know, some aliens or whatever, or whatever. It's you know, they do pew 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 pew, pew. and. <laughs> And basically she gets captured and uh, there's little like purple rays going into her into her head and basically just replaying a bunch of things that comes back from her mind and it's like really confusing what happens because she thinks that she had a past life before she had you know what she's doing now basically fighting and stuff. While she was fighting all the people and trying to leave, she ended up uh, on Earth. They were their shapes shift. She crashes on Earth with another alien. And basically, that alien is a shape-shifting, you know, person. And basically, uh, if you want to know what really is her past life, or if she ever had one, be sure to watch the movie to find out. Okay, well, I hope next week. Next week, I don't think I'm going to do one. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mandala's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing Kung Fu Panda 2. The beginning of the movie starts off with any other movie of Kung Fu Panda, just, well, it's the second one, so I guess it's not any other movie. She basically just starts off with him just hanging out with his friends, you know, Tiger Crane, you know, all those people, they're just hanging out, whatever. Shifu calls for Po on top of like a mountain. He went to the birth of Kung Fu, the yi, the yin yang place symbol thingy. And basically, Shifu was basically uh, talking to him about having to find inner peace. Like he want, like he needs to find inner peace to become a full dragon warrior. Because he really doesn't know what he is. He starts questioning his life, even if his dad is his real dad. Probably still his dad, I don't know. So Po starts questioning his own life, where he came from, you know, all these different questions that he's asking, and he's like really confused of like everything. So basically, the village goes under attack and everything, and you know, there's these rhinos and other animals. They're just all fighting, like boom, boom, bam, bam. They're just boom, fighting, and Po's like, and he's like, Poe's fighting this one guy, and he sees a symbol on this one guy that looks like this. And basically, he has like a flashback thing of like 
whatever it was. And every time he sees that, he sees a bunch of pandas and just just this weird, just this weird symbol. So he goes on a journey with uh, a Furious Five to go fight this one guy and basically just you know attack him. And if you want to know what's in those flashbacks, and maybe the person he's fighting was a which was in those flashbacks, make sure that's a spoiler. And if you want to know what happens next, make sure to watch the movie to find out. Skadoosh. Oh, what? Well, I think it's some kind of malfunction of the emojis on my phone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll never have malfunctions again. <laughs> Alright, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Madonna's Only Minute. In this episode, we'll be removed. Hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Madonna's Only Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Emoji Movie. The beginning of the movie starts out with a character named Gene. Uh, going into a phone for a first time. It's kind of like a phone like text a pop a text the populace I think that's what it's Called I don't really Something something like that in this like kind of phone or Story or whatever it is the emojis grow up to be you know uh, an, emo an actual emoji in the phone and they have like this weird scanner thing and basically how it works is that when someone tries to pick an emoji there's a scanner that scans the person like as the emoji and does the emoji they're doing as if like the poop emoji you know how it's like smiling so it, in the movie you know like they can do like different things this this isn't working when a person picks an emoji it scans like the person and how they are it scans like their body and how they look so they need so if someone's happy they need to look happy if someone's sad they need to look sad and when they scan them you can they can either change the emoji that they're doing but they don't have to change it jean is a meh kind of emoji but for some reason when it's his first day on the scanner he stands up looks so super ready and when someone presses on him for the emoji he actually uh yeah, yeah, da, 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 take four so in the real world like out of the phone there's this kid and he likes um, another girl so he's like texting her like nervously and stuff right so he presses on an emoji that kind of he presses on the meh emoji. So he presses on that, right? And he's texting this girl, right? And he wants to send the meh emoji. But when Gene, when he scans him, he gets all scared like, and he's, he was so happy before to have his own little box thing, you know, cause they have a little box where they stand in to scan them. Anyway, he was too, super happy to be in those. He was like really excited. But as soon as the scanner got him, he was scared. Like he didn't know what to do. So he did a bunch of other emojis, like, you know, the dead emoji, you know, the laughing emoji. When he was supposed to be met, he looks at his phone, he's like, what's this? And, you know, the girl he's talking to, they're all laughing at him, he's like, oh. So now he wants to put the phone, you know, you know he thought it was like a one kind of thing. He, he thought it would, it would take six. He thought it was kind of like a one kind of thing, like it would never really happen again. Like it doesn't, like the emoji won't malfunction again. But he pressed it again. And guess what? It happened again. So what they're gonna do now? And basically, if he takes to a phone store, it will be reset, and then everything in there that will, you know, basically die. Textopolis, Gene, all the things were die. Just like a new phone, kind of everything gets erased, thing like that. And they want to prevent it so he can become a regular emoji, so nothing will, you know, happen to them. So they go on an epic quest to see uh, if they can get. Uh, take seven. So they go on a long journey to, you know, uh, basically fix them and, you know, so they don't want to get erased. So they go on an epic quest, you know, they go on these little journeys through a bunch of different apps to basically just try and find a way to stop all of this. And if you want to know how they stop it or will they stop it, make sure to watch the movie to find out. This is our honey. People are stealing our honey. Can you believe this? Our honey is being stolen by humans. We should go to court about this. I got a notification. Ah! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Madonna's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the B movie. The beginning of the movie 
starts out with the one and only Barry B. Benson. But Barry B. Benson going to different jobs around his little honey plant thingy, the, with, uh, his hive, going around different things to um, look for a job because that's how bees work. As he's looking for a job, he realizes, he sees these um, bees that go out of the hive and they're special kind of bees, aka pollen jocks, right? So they are, they're like, wait, so Barry's like, I should be a pollen, pollen jock. He should do that. We're gonna take three again. Here, I'll do it. So we're just, oh my God. So basically, Barry wants to be a pollen jock and he wants to go out of the hive and collect nectar and pollen and, you know, basically have that as a job for this hive. So the next day he goes over there, he says hi to Pollen Jocks. He's like, yo, bro, we saw it, dude. And the bros are like, bro, you gotta get over here. You gotta, you gotta join us. And the dude's like, alright, cool, man. So they stand, so they stand together and they fly out of the hive and he follows this one dude and they look at the they go to the flowers and stuff. They extract nectar and he's like, no way. And they have like these little guns. It's like, you know, they go to court, blah blah blah. And if you wanna see if they win or not, be sure to Watch the movie to find out. They make me own poco loco. I want to be a musician, but my parents and everybody in my el everybody else in my family says no. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go over to where Ernesto Ernesto de la Cruz died. Take his guitar strum it once and flowers come around me and then I end up where dead people are. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Madonna's Movie Minute. In this episode, we'll be reviewing Coco. The beginning of the movie starts out with uh, Miguel, the main character of the story, explaining why their family hates music and they basically have to run on shoes because a guy, um, what is it, his great-great-grandfather left his family to play for the world. So now they all hate music now. So they run on shoes now, and the family grew bigger and bigger, and so did the business. And uh, Miguel, the main character, as uh, once I said again, actually wants to um, become a musician, but his parents hate it when they do, when they do it because you know they want to throw the musician out because his great great grandfather uh, left him. And he thinks that um, Ernesto de la Cruz, which is um, a famous Mexican, they're Mexican, right? The famous Mexican, you know, musician player, and in his picture, pic, picture, and in the family photo, um, the, he's also there's a missing head and just has a body. Miguel thinks Ernesto de la Cruz is his great great grandfather, so he goes to like a graveyard, because that was like where dead Day of the Dead was. They believe that um, you know the the dead um, goes to the overworld and sees them all. So he set up this cool thing. So he goes to um, you know uh, his tomb, kind of. He he kind of he breaks in and he steals his guitar and there's like these little orange kind of petals things and when he plays it once these petals kind of like consume him sort of they all kind of like spiral around him and uh, he ends up being in like where dead people are there's a bunch of like uh, skeleton people and you know where basically he even saw like his great grandmother his great great grandmother you know not not his great great grandmother that's mama but he's there, he's, she's still alive. The petals spiral around him, and now he's kind of like in the dead world. He can see all of his relatives that died and everything. He's kind of stuck in this world. He doesn't know why. He's super, super confused. And then he learns that if he doesn't, if he doesn't make it back to the overworld, he'll be stuck there, dead as a skeleton. I wasn't trying to make a phrase there. So basically, he's dead as a skeleton if he doesn't make it uh, before sunset. And he sees all his families and stuff, and he needs basically their blessing to go back, but he wants to be blessed as a musician, but their family hate, hates music, so he needs to get blessed by his great-great-grandfather, which is Ernesto de la Cruz. And um, if you want to know what happens next, even if, he does, even if he does get blessed by Ernesto de la Cruz, then watch the movie to find out. I am Iron Man. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of My Dawson in a Minute. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing Endgame. Get it? Because it's the end of My Dawson in a Minute. Wow, that's so original. <laughs>
Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Madonna's Movie Minute. In this episode, we're going to be viewing Avengers Endgame. Unfortunately, this is our last Madonna's Movie Minute, which is the reason I am currently doing Endgame. Anywho, let's get right into the reviewing. The beginning of the movie starts out with, basically, after the fight of Infinity War. Thanos has all the stones. Um, in the beginning of the movie, it shows that, I think it was Hawkeye, yeah, Hawkeye, um, his family kind of disappears because Thanos snapped his gloves. And his whole family like starts to disappear and stuff. And then it, it kind of has like a transition that says five years later. And basically five years later, everybody has like a new life and stuff. And everything started over, basically. Anywho, we're just going to cut straight to the main part, which is like all the action actually happens. Um, If you watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, at the end of the credits, it showed when Thanos actually snapped his um, fingers that, um, you know, everybody, when he was in the quantum realm, Everybody that was supposed to bring him out was basically disappeared. He couldn't come back. And after five years, someone something started the machine and he came back after five years. And he was kind of confused of how everything happened. And he looks at like a title board kind of thing and says like, it shows like who we have lost and his name is there. So he runs to his house and stuff, wondering how he's all confused and saying how people think he's dead. And everybody is explaining to him how it's been five years after the snap. But he explains that for him, it's only been five hours. So he and the, and um, all the other Avengers basically try to get back together again, basically have like a new machine to go back in time into the quantum realm and basically try to bring everybody back and stop Thanos from getting all six infinity monster stones. So now they're going back to different times and stuff. And um, this is a spoiler. Uh, the sister of Gamora, I, for, I forget her name. So she's like a robot, right? There's two of them. And they kind of transfer memories because they're kind of, they're the same person. So the past uh, people kind of get these, see the future of what you know, like of what's happening, what people are doing. So Thanos is kind of like ex like ready to go fight and stuff, and he wants to change his future because he saw how he died. He was making breakfast and the Avengers kill him. Short story, yeah, boo, hat, wham, whatever. Anywho, so he now he's kind of prepared for them and he wants to get all the six Infinity Stones as fast as he could and as fast as he can at least and. In the end, you know, um, Doctor Strange, well, that's basically, well, not, well, cut. So basically, in the end, we're just gonna skip to the end after the main part, where they're all just trying to get the stones. Skip to the end. Basically, you know, um, uh, Thanos is basically whacking everybody off with this awesome sick hammer that he has, He's basically destroying everyone. And we found, found out, you know how Thor can hold his hammer? Yeah, so Captain America can hold that stuff too. Basically, we're just gonna skip to the end, you know. So they got the time stone and stuff, and they were able to bring uh, everybody back. There's like these weird Doctor Strange portals that happened, and everybody's basically coming out from people who have faded, Spider-Man, uh, anybody else that died, and Doctor Strange kind of like saved them in a way. It was a Doctor Strange portal, it looked cool. And then I Thor, or I know, I think it was Captain America. Someone goes, um, let's see. He goes like, uh, he goes Avengers Assemble, and then this awesome music, and this amazing fight against Thanos, and he's just killing everybody and looks so insane, and then we skip to the end, where everybody's all dead. And Doctor Strange gives Iron Man one look, and he goes like this. And then Iron Man freaking books it, this books it, this books it, to the gauntlet, he's like, <laughs> and uh, Iron Man freaking whips him off. And then Iron Man, and then he snaps his fingers, because he got all six Infinity Stones, and he goes, I am inevitable. Bam! And Iron Man's, and he's not working because he doesn't have the stones. Then you look in the corner, and Iron Man's, and Iron Man's like, with all six stones. And he's like, Psh! and everything's like, Psh! and it, it looks really, um, cool. And then uh, Iron Man's kind of resting in the corner because he couldn't withstand the blast of all the radiation of the stones. And in the end, he goes to another life. He's dead. That's how we're gonna end it off with Marazumi Minute. Let's go! Go team!